I'm going to make a two final very, very pithy comments about the secrets of lenses, and I'll make this brief. And uh, this is the first one people really don't understand, and nobody writes about this, but they listen closely because it's important. Say I've got, um, let's pretend, well, let's not. Let's just say this is a 7200 2.8, which is exactly what it is. Why is a fashion photographer and a professional photographer going out there and using... You, you've ever seen or held or used, I have, that uh, super, super expensive 200mm uh, f2 Nikkor lens. Insanely expensive. Now, you're going to yourself, well, this lens is $1,500, and, you know, at 200 millimeters, it's an f2.8. That lens is 200 millimeters also, and uh, it's only an f2. Okay, f2, f2.8, you know, not much difference there. Well, you know, but that lens costs a truckload of money. And uh, people think, well, you know, why why would you buy that? Um, well, it's because it's a prime lens. Okay, well, that's almost an answer. Well, why is the prime lens better? Well, it's because it's a prime lens. No. No. Uh, the, the way this lens actually renders images better than the 200mm at f2. The 200mm f2 is exquisite and certainly certainly so much better than uh, the 70 to 200 2.8 or any other a uh, zoom lens is uh, at f2.8, or even if it was an f2. The point being is that the reason fashion photographers and portrait photographers are using lenses like this, the 180mm f2.8, or the 200mm f2, or you'll actually see this. Like I used to live in San Francisco, there'd be a lot of fashion photographers in San Francisco, because there's a lot of beautiful spots to take photographs there. Uh, up on the hill where the three famous uh, buildings are. And you'll see them using, they'll step back and uh, they'll use like a 300 millimeter f2.8. And you're thinking, well, they're using that lens because of the, uh, of, uh, the aperture. And it's like, no, they're not really uh, shooting that lens uh, most of the time in f2.8. No, I mean, yeah, quite often they are. But, uh, a lot of those beautiful spots in San Francisco and New York City, they want to see the background. So they're shooting at F4, F5. So why the hell is do you see the professional fashion photographer that has looked at bazillions of images? Even if he doesn't know lenses, he knows what the hell looks better. And he's tried out a lot of lenses. He doesn't know why, but he knows it looks better. Why the hell is that person using a 200 millimeter or 300 millimeter, a super expensive, super huge, super fast uh, lens instead of like this lens. Well, he's shooting it at f4, f5.6. Why is he using that gigantic? I should have brought out my 300 millimeter f2.8. You know, the front of that lens is about that big. Why are they using that lens, which is f2.8, at f5.6? You know, they could just use this lens at, uh, or and this isn't 300 millimeter, but at, like a 300 millimeter at f5.6. You don't understand. Those are low element count prime lenses. The color saturation, the uh, the pop, the micro contrast, what people call Zeiss pop or pops micro contrast, the color saturation, which is technically bandwidth. There's uh, four dictates of uh, professional lenses. Uh, uh, R, P, G, B. Resolution, everybody talks about how sharp it is, and, and people need to shut up about that because that's all they talk about, like a parrot. How sharp is it? How sharp is it? Phase, gain, and bandwidth. Phase, chromatic aberration, how it actually handles the light. Gain, its actual true transmissive power. Bandwidth, its color saturation, the how it deals with the near and far end of spectrum. The reason they're using a 300 millimeter I say a fashion photographer wants to see some of the beautiful background. You don't always want to blur out the damn background. Um, you know, why the hell is he using that huge-ass damn lens on a monopod at f4, f5.6? You know, why? Because the characteristics of that prime lens are so divine that, you know, you just can't take a zoom lens. Well, it's like, well, I've got a bunch of zoom lenses back there that are uh, f5.6 at their widest at 300 mil like the 70 to the 70 to 300 um, uh, vrg nikkor i mean that lens at 300 uh, millimeters is f5.6 why isn't that the same well because it's a zoom lens well it doesn't tell me anything that's the description why why is the hardcore professional that's tested out a bunch of lenses why because of the nature of that prime lens. The low element, 
Yeah, that huge, huge, huge lens, which I've, I've got a couple of them in the back room there. That lens don't have too much glass in it. Yeah, well, the front element is obviously extremely huge, but it is a low element count prime lens, and it just makes the images pop, the color saturation pop. Everything about it makes it almost holographically pop off the page. The micro contrast, the color saturation, beautiful. If you understand that, then you will know more than 99% of the other people out there into photography. I kid you not. Point number two. Okay? This is a two-point video. So now we're on to point number two. Micro contrast. If you are a hardcore a black and white uh, nut, like you black and white, man, black and white, this is so important. And why does nobody talk about this? Because there's almost nobody that knows about this sort of stuff. Sure they do. No, they don't. They'll tell you that a prime lens is better for black and white, but that doesn't mean a damn thing. They would be accurate, but that doesn't tell you anything. Micro contrast. Micro contrast is insanely important in black and white. When you're dazzled by the colors, you're not too focused on the micro contrast of the shot. If you are interested in black and white photography, just ask me the question. I'll tell you which lens for whatever focal you want. Micro contrast is incredibly important. Incredible. You can't add that in Lightroom or in Photoshop. No, 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 you cannot. That sort of silvery gradation that makes the black and white shop just pop off the page and slap you right in the damn face. Just slap the piss out of you. It just jumps right off the page. Micro contrast, if you're into black and white and you don't know to look for micro contrast, uh, my hardcore micro contrast lenses, then you are making a hardcore fundamental boo boo mistake error. Okay, so black and white photography necessitates if you're gonna get good. Re I don't care how good of a photographer you are, if you choose a lens that has bad micro contrast, your black and white shots are gonna suck, and all the Lightroom sliders in the world are not gonna fix it. Okay, period, flat out. I'm glad I could tell you that. If you have any questions about which lenses have awesome micro contrast for black and white photography for whatever focal length you want, let me know. I'll answer those questions. I'm glad I could help you on that. And this is video number two on the secrets of lenses. Okay? And you'll not find this information anywhere else. If you like this video, you could always make a donation, a couple bucks via PayPal, or you could tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Okay? Bye.